We live in strange, in strange times that what everybody is saying. For me, the effects of the global pandemic are not only strange, but also uncertain, fearful, unstable. I try to find nearness, connection, optimism in the distance. And isn't it especially the art of photography, which is creating nearness and a sense of familiarity through the distance of the lens? Maybe. With this, I'm handing over to Blanca, gallerist of the Anne Friends Gallery, formerly Studio Gallery at Siam Art Room, which is situated in Eastern Moabit, and the curator of the group show Three the Crowd, visiting Berlin, which is taking place in the Berlin month of photography of 2020. So Blanca, the floor is yours. Would you introduce us to this year's exhibition, the context and the approach, please? Okay, ciao everybody, hello, hello, uh, bienvenue tout le monde. Uh, welcome to our little uh, art space and friends gallery, which is a conceptual name uh, for, uh, well, every other year in uh, average, we have a, a photography group show together. And now this year we are only the core group, but in other years we had other guests. So Simone, Cor Corinne and me, uh, had a plan of kind of virtually visiting Berlin this year because already in the spring when we applied to take part in this program, we realized it might get hard in, in the autumn to really meet in person. So far, actually the program of this, my um, cur curating at this gallery has been to invite people whom I only knew from the internet, from a virtual space, uh, into um, haptics, into my place, have their uh, photographs here and have them here in person. So this year we're going back to virtual. This is the concept, in a way, of today's uh, yeah artist talk. What made me invite these people is that we really have a long time friendship, not only photography wise, but some of us keep meeting somewhere in the world. And I really appreciate these two people of photographs and I like to join um, us three in this little space so we can have an artist exchange in a way. Thanks a lot. Thank you for this introduction. Thank you, Bianca. So I would like to welcome our first artist, Corinne, Corinne Glassiou. And I shortly want to introduce Corinne Corinne is living in Toulouse, France, southern France, where she is practicing with both passion and a vital urgency. Three roles, really, medical biology, contemporary dance and photography. So today we get to know the part of Corinne, which is the photographer and perhaps more, who knows. Corinne was born and raised in Brittany, where she learned about photography with her father. However, she's a self-thought photographer, motivated by curiosities, open eyes and open mind. So Corinne likes traveling and large parts of her pictures are travel photographs, where she uses a variety of different cameras. Corinne does not intend to search for technical performance, but rather letting imperfection and surprise generate dynamics and creativities. That's what I heard. <laughs> So for Corinne, photography is a very personal approach and it is often also a solitary work. This makes it essential for her to take part in these sorts of collective projects. And each time it's a new project, so it's not a standard exhibition. It's the, the pieces of work we will see. Now um, they are just built up for this exhibition. 
So um, art enables Corinne to keep the balance between also the reality, the emotion and doubts and allowing her to live in the here and now. So I hope Corinne, I, <laughs> this characterizes you a bit and about the work On s'était dit rendez-vous is the title of Corinne's uh, scrapbook like section, montages and intimate street photos of her own handwriting. So I first will show the film. So that was the film of Corinne and I just will put up a, a couple of the artworks where we can now um, talk a bit more. I chose this first one because um, I think um, it's, a, it's a montage of um, you and a background and um, yeah I just uh, want you to ask on um, how do you approach Berlin, this special place, as a photographer? And what does Berlin make a special rendezvous for you in the front and Berlin in the back? Uh, in Berlin, it's very difficult because uh, I am always lost <laughs> between history, geography, west, east, uh, north, and south. I completely lost. <laughs> And um, I search uh, the standard marks of uh, the urban cities that I know, but very far away at the same thing. All uh, right, yeah. I, I, I re realized that um, in your photographs and motifs, colors and shades often overlap and mingle. Does this have a relation to these days where like certainty and clearness is dissolving and the kind of ambiguity takes over? And how do you feel in these moments of pandemic as an artist? Of course, this epidemic affects indeed uh, all of your, our life. Huh? And uh, uh, we have a restricted area. Uh, the visiting building was forbidden, so it was very difficult to to think about uh, um, something very standard for the photographies. Um, I finally found colors, but uh, I'm always lost, uh, and in this period, most of the uh, Particularly, uh, the planet is stopped and uh, in a big depth. Uh, yeah. So you see the world and the cities, Europe with different eyes. Uh, so the project was visiting Berlin, but visiting Berlin was uh, forbidden. This was a bit destabilizing. Yeah. It seems that Berlin seems to be full of photo booths. Tourists love to make fun group photos in the booths, hiding behind and being part of it at the same time. Showing parts of themselves and hiding others. Sometimes to me, it's like, if it's like Berlin as such, seems to be revealing only parts of itself. So what are the, you know, is this also inspiring you as a photographer, the kind of open and hidden 
parts of the city? Uh, about the photo booth? Yeah, yeah like for like a, a metaphor. <laughs> yes, because photo booths are finally a place to find myself with no uncertainty. Mm. And the rendezvous also, because it's a lot of fun to meet there and to get together. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> What also strikes me that if I look at this, I would not think of Berlin, but it, indeed it's a very green city as well, and you can escape very, very soon into nature. So, um, how how do you perceive like nature in in a city like Berlin? Yeah, there are a lot of big parks in Berlin. Uh, it's a characteristic of the city. Berlin is a contrary of a dense city where can see in Europe in general. Yeah, I like this at, at Berlin. <laughs> it's very pleasant. It's very pleasant, like here. I like that. I like the colors. <laughs> so there is a special um, relation with the time. It's uh, uh, you can uh, slow. Yeah, yeah. So it's it, it's calming down. Yeah. What I like, what strikes me particularly also in your photos are the colors and reflections. You seem to have a preference for light colors, shades, light blue contrasted with red or orange, and as well as reflections. How does this refer to this theme of the exhibition as a last question? Yes, I finally found colors in Berlin. Maybe that means uh, I am starting to understand the town. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to our annual rendezvous, I meet people, inhabitants of Berlin, and I talk with them. Also, uh, these rendezvous are very happy moments, uh, so colors can be sad. Right. So that's a, that's a glance at um, Corinne's part of the exhibition. On s'était uh, dit rendezvous. I will continue with um, Simone. Ciao. <laughs> ciao, ciao, Simone. Aka Black Napkin. And I always wondered if, what's the Black Napkin about? <laughs> That's your <laughs> artist <a> name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's from a Frank Zappa song. All right. <laughs> a nonsense song. Your title is Everything Will Be Better Next Time. Marx, Engels, and me. Um, and for this project, we will have a short movie as well. Um, you placed calls for international participation online. So whoever sent you postcards and selfies involving the famous displaced monument in Mitte will take part in this work of art. And so we are very curious um, to see more about. So I will just start also the, the film.
<laughs> Thank you for the movie. And I just also um, will have a couple of pictures. Mm. I want to um, come back to. There we see you, I think, in different phases, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> different states of your life. <laughs> and yes. um, yeah, that was it's the first question. What, what is your personal link to the, to the city of Berlin and the Marx Engels Forum? And when have you been there? And what is it about Marx, Engels and you? <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, I've been in Berlin the first time in uh, 2000. I was a Erasmus student. I okay. was studying archaeology in Berlin at Freie Universität. And uh, for the first time, I lived alone in a big city uh, with me, only with me and with uh, uh, other people who, who I know I know it for the first time. And uh, I, discovered, I discovered the city and I understood the city, the contemporary city. And uh, this is so fantastic experience for me. And um, I discovered also the bronze status, the status of uh, Marx and Engels. And uh, I returned in, uh, in Berlin in 2002. And again, after uh, 15 uh, years. And all the cities changed. But the uh, Marx and Engels, um, was, uh, yes, replaced, but uh, still, still there. And uh, I discovered that uh, I was aged, <laughs> and I discovered a different me, and uh, I want to work with. Uh, the status and because they uh, they look always the same and all changed around hmm. so so strange for me all right um you you placed a call for action as i mentioned whoever would send you postcards will be included in this piece of art and how was the response, response for the call for action? Were there many people who sent you like postcards and selfies? And is this the, a bit uh, characteristic also on how you are working? Yeah. Yes, I love working this way uh, with uh, other people. So with people who I don't know. Uh, I, I like who the destiny works for me. And uh, it's... Uh, it's a difficult work because the people are um, uh, are skeptical, are, are not sure with the others, uh, not in safe zone. But um, for this project, uh, I asked uh, with Instagram at people, and uh, I received um, uh, fifty photos. Okay. I selected. <laughs> Was it difficult uh, to choose? Uh, difficult? Was it difficult to make the selection? Uh, no, 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 no. The selection, no. But uh, yes, I, I tried to find inspiration with uh, particular photo. And I found inspiration. And um, I worked with all kinds of... Um, uh, pics I received, postcard, uh, uh, Instagram pics, uh, okay. uh, pics uh, from Instagram story. It's uh, hard to work with uh, all of kind of pictures, but it's so so inspiring. Thanks. I would go to another like characteristics of your photos. I call them the blurred ones. <laughs> Um, many of the, your pieces show not only different perspectives, but are also a montage between clear and blurred, static and motion, front and back, like here. To me, it reflects also a bit the ambiguity of these days and of the city of Berlin, where nothing is really clear and explicit. What is your idea behind this montage? 
yes, maybe this way, but, but also I think this for me is a, a like a philosophical problem because if you want to see uh, a, a photo uh, in the, the real photo, the, the real subject, you must get closer the photo. If you get closer the photo, you don't see nothing. Mm. You see blurred photo. And the, maybe the people believe again that the photography is the representation of reality. But I think no. I think that the, maybe the blurred photo is the representation of the reality, the All real right. reality, the deep okay. reality. Oh, yeah, that's an interesting thought of reality and perspectives of reality, like here. And I, I particularly, I am struck by this photo, which is my favorite, as I told you. Um, the coloring and the contrast for me is also a bit typical Berlin, like black and white and color. And also for me, a notion of sadness or loneliness probably. So how do you col use colors, black and white colors, um, contrast as a means of expression in photography? Last yeah. question. Okay. This is a, my collage with the, the postcard from Corinne. All oh, right. And, uh, yes, I love to search a sign, a color, a movement, a, an element who can, and I work with uh, with them in this kind of in, in this photo. I uh, I loved the color, the blurred color, and I found these pictures. I shoot in Berlin, and uh, I, I loved the, uh, the composition. Um, yes, I work. Uh, I worked with the uh, black and white photo in 2000 for 10 years, B but uh, now I work only with colors photo. I All think right. that uh, I work. I, I prefer colors for the uh, the photo of my life uh, because the color means for me the the time. The, the time uh, around us, as uh, how change the color, change the, the time, the life, and I use the black and white photo for the timeless um, uh, pics and uh, no place pic pics. I prefer the black and white. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Simone. So now I introduce Blanca not as a curator and gallerist, but an, as a photographer and artist, Blanca Art. Blanca is a Berlin-based artist producing, producing intuitive paintings, picturesque photography, as well as objects in up and down cycling art. She's inspired by intercultural affairs she has lived, as well as by ethnological topics and archetypes. Blanca, and I know her as that, have always been looking, watching, and seeing. Photography came along naturally with her first camera set, originally to catch sketches of pictures she wanted to paint in some future. Meanwhile, her paintings and drawings have gone separate ways, so have her upcycling lifestyle objects, and some of them are in my walls in my rooms at home. <laughs> What used to be Blanca Unsinn eventually became Blanca Bunte Bilder and is now Blanca Art. So her part of the exhibition, the place to be tourist watching. Um, Blanca shows a series of drive-by snaps. These are casual arrangements against the backdrop of the legendary East Side Gallery, which is one of the last standing the former Berlin Wall. And the Side gallery really was dividing Friedrichshain in the east and Kreuzberg in the west and is hosting 844 segments of concrete. I was <laughs> putting that out a little book. It is 3.60 meters high and more than 1,000 meters long. And it's the longest and probably 
most famous open air gallery in the world, attracting more than 3 million visitors per year, probably not this year, however. 100 artists from 21 different countries came together in after, after the war came down um, and paint this remaining part of the wall in 1990. Taking a collective stand, protecting the wall and remembrance of history for future generations. So I will show a series of the drive-by snapshots from Blanca before I will ask some questions. the series of snapshots from the drive-by shootings of Blanca. Going back to the first one, um, so what are your personal links and ties to this divided city? And like also the East Side um, Gallery is a representation of this division, the former division. <laughs> Actually, frankly, I didn't really notice it's it, for my photos. I didn't really notice the uh, symbol for division. Um, but actually, of course, the wall has played an important role in my life. I don't know if uh, I told anyone <laughs> yet. I used to be a so-called Malakin wall kid. So uh, when the wall was built, my parents were on the western side studying and me myself i was living with my grandparents in the east always not always i do have my camera ready as actually i'm a phone photographer <laughs> so, um, you know about the phones they are never ready they are never charged when you need them even if you need them there so these are some kind of lapis and um yeah, actually, I, what I feel about it is um, you have three layers. You have my inside the car, it's my personal view. Uh, I invite you to be in the car and look outside what's happening. And if I'm lucky, there are people doing something, sta staging themselves. We did, and two years ago, we did have a big exhibition about, um, yeah ego shooters, which meant uh, self, artistic self-photography. Uh, when I'm lucky, I uh, kind of uh, can take a snapshot of people staging themselves with a, uh, on the backdrop of the wall. Um, and I'm, yeah, a little bit sorry to say I'm also using this uh, big gallery with important artworks of other people as a backdrop for my photos. All right. Yeah. I think this is quite a famous mural, one of the fa most famous murals of um, the East Side Gallery, the, the famous Trubby by Birgit Kinder, I think is, is the artist, mm -hmm. if I'm not wrong. So I wanted to ask you if you had special murals in mind or if these are just like by chance. Well, as I already mentioned, it is sheer luck and chance. And <laughs> I, just do, I was advised not to say uh, drive by shootings anymore because it's not po politically correct, but I mean it in a different way. Um, of course, I pass regularly on a regular basis and I 
do a lot of photographs. So, and, I didn't yeah. have so I didn't have special motifs in mind, but uh, they appear in front of my lens and I just have to take them with me. Um, actually, I have to mention, uh, well, I would have to mention all the artists. Um, uh, Bianca said there is a book. I have kind of acquainted myself with the artists now during the preparation of this uh, exhibition. But I didn't really, uh, yeah, take that into account. All right. But I want to mention Birgit Kinder, who has a website of her own. It's called Wandmalerei Berlin, I think. And she expressly mentioned that she likes people to uh, share her famous painting of the Tabi breaking the wall if we only mention her name. So this is, um, yeah, I'm doing this very, uh, with pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Probably what, an, 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 another question, it's about like the rain, because you contrasted like drive-by shootings in sunny or non-rainy weather and rainy weather. And I'm also quite impressed by the rainy ones because there is again, this notion of blurred and vagueness and, you know, not seeing things really clear. Is that also a, a kind of inspiration for you? The blurriness of Berlin? <laughs> Blurred Berlin, boo boo. <laughs> yes. um, no, the blurriness happens just as rain happens. And um, as I said, I don't go there and choose motives, but uh, I discovered, um, within my archives that they have a special, uh, especially these rainy pictures have such a special tenderness to them. So uh, one side of my uh, section of this exhibition is dedicated to the rainy pictures. And I also love them very much. I want to show that your pictures are not how can I show this? That they are not fixed at the wall, but they are suspended. So they are free floating, really. They are free floating in the ceiling. Wow. Um, <laughs> and yeah, what's the idea behind? Is it a certain volatility of the moment as we talked last week? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what was your idea behind of suspend them? Um, yeah, one of them was. Uh, practical uh, thought that uh, there's space to hang pictures <laughs> at the ceiling. Then there's the um, the panoramic uh, view. I had them printed on banners and they're kind of just Xerox paper and I love uh, it that they are hanging freely. They don't really interfere uh, with the other sections of the other artists, but um, yeah, and it does give me a kind of free floating feeling, which I also have when I cruise the town. So, oh, all right. That's it for the moment. And yeah, thank you, Blanca, for having the opportunity for hosting this. So, for me, it's also always, you know, big learning. So, Hope it's always if sometimes not working from at the first sight, but I think we managed it. <laughs> yes, thank you very much, Bianca, for your charming, for being such a charming hostess and moderator. Thank you. Thank you for your interest. Uh, yeah, and yeah, do come back. Everybody come back uh, in virtual or real life. Um, See you soon. See you soon. Okay. Yeah. So, Ciao. Bye bye. bye. <laughs> Ciao.